Now, I would like to welcome on stage the amazing Beth Ann Scott, who would like to share the story of her late husband, Dave. Please welcome on stage Beth Ann Scott. Here she is. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you first of all for choosing to spend your Saturday here with us um, this evening. Um, thank you for choosing to walk for the ward of Nightingale House Hospice. We're all here, aren't we? We're all here for a reason. Um, and we all have our own unique ways of raising money. But tonight, we're all here raising money together. We're together as one group and we're walking for the ward. Um, whether you've been touched yourself by the wonderful work of Nightingale House Hospice or whether you share experience of friends and family, you will have your reason for doing this walk and thank you so much. I would just like to share with you my reason um, for walking tonight and the reason why Nightingale House holds such a special place in my heart. So back in 2016, my lovely husband um, to be at the time, Dave, was diagnosed with cancer of the esophagus. We'd come back off holiday, David presented no symptoms at all. Um, we'd gone to the Myla and we were told there and then that Dave needed to have a course of chemotherapy and he needed to start that treatment in three weeks. Dave had his treatment and the idea being the chemotherapy would shrink the tumour and he'd be able to have an operation and that happened. So in the June of that year he had an operation to remove the tumour and as far as we were concerned it was successful. It happened at the Myla and they were truly amazing with Dave. In the September, Dave was due to go back to work, um, but then he started to experience headaches. I took him back to the GP in Rose, in the village that we lived, and um, the GP referred us back to the consultant at the Myla. Dave had a scan, and the next day we were given the results. And we were devastated to find out that Dave had a brain tumour. He had a secondary tumour in the brain. We were told we would need to go to Walton Hospital, and we went to Walton Hospital, and Dave had his brain tumour removed. He had 30 rounds of radiotherapy in the November of the same year that he was diagnosed and we had a wonderful Christmas together, we really did. On the 9th of January, and I can picture him now, it's his birthday and we were sitting in Foozies in Llangothlin actually and Dave was drinking coffee, he was eating at lunch and he looked a picture of health. And the following week we were due to go back to a spotty glancloid for Dave to have some results of a routine scan. We got to a spotty gland cloid and they said that everything was contained. It was just a standard um, result and we would just keep on monitoring. The following week, I took back, uh, Dave back to a spotty gland cloid because he was having pain in the back of his neck. Dave had an MRI scan and we were told then that Dave's cancer had spread to his spine. And at that point, they told us that Dave had between two and six weeks to live. And you're given that news and what do you do? What, what do you do? You, you try to take it all in. And you can either decide to go home and you can watch that clock ticking and you can count the days down or you can choose to do something else. And we had this real will. We had this real will that we wanted Dave to live. And I really believed it was that that led us to Nightingale House Hospice. We were referred to Nightingale House Hospice by a doctor at a spotty gland cloid and she said, you know, Beth, and I think that Dave would really benefit from use of the hydrotherapy pool. Dave was super fit. Prior to his illness, he was a runner, he was a cyclist, he was a skier. So to go from being super fit to being paralysed was just cruel. But for him to go and use the hydrotherapy pool at Nightingale House Hospice and have that feeling that he was having some form of exercise, that gave Dave a will to live. Dave drew, grew in confidence and started attending the day therapy at Nightingale House. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, He'd go to the hospice, he's a 10 day therapy, art and woodwork therapy, and we would look forward to that time. You know, I tried my best to look after Dave. I wasn't a nurse, but with the support of the district nurses, I tried my best for as long as I could. But there came a time that we thought Dave needed to go into Nightingale House Hospice to the ward just to have some time to help with his pain management. And he went in for two weeks and he had the most wonderful room. He was welcomed with open arms. He spent his afternoons in the sun, sunbathing. We had friends in, we took takeaways in. It was an incredible experience. I picked him up on the Friday and on the Saturday, we were getting married and we were actually getting married here. We managed to get Dave to the registry office here and we had a lovely wedding and we had a lovely afternoon in our garden. And three weeks to the day that Dave and I got married, Dave passed away. He passed away at home. 
it was a Saturday afternoon, it was 12.30, I was holding his hand and he passed away peacefully. And I will tell you this right now, if it wasn't for him going into Nightingale House and spending that time on the ward, I know that Dave wouldn't have been able to get through our wedding. He got through our wedding, his eyes were open and he was pain free. And I will always be truly grateful for Nightingale House and all those wonderful doctors, nurses, all the staff there and the volunteers for what they did for Dave and I. So I want to say thank you to you, because what you're doing tonight, I can tell you hand on heart, every single penny that you raise makes a massive, massive difference. So thank you to you, thank you to your supporters and everybody that sponsored you. And I want to finish with this by saying whether you're doing the 10 mile tonight or the 10K, if it gets tough, just remember. Remember this, a journey shared is a journey enjoyed. So please go out there and enjoy yourself. Well done and thank you.